Hi guys, I'm Bob and welcome to this tutorial and today we're going to be creating this cigarette smoke, wispy smoke look. We'll be using Turbulence FD to create a fluid simulation. We'll then be using that simulation to drive X particles to follow the shape of the smoke. I'll show you how to render in X particles and then we'll do one more tutorial at the end of how to turn that X particles into a really high resolution Krakatoa render with millions and millions of particles. So that's it, let's jump into Cinema 4D. All right, so here we are in Cinema 4D and what we need to do first is we need to generate an area where we're going to simulate our Turbulence FD fluid. So what we need to do is go to Plugins, Turbulence FD, and here are all your Turbulence FD settings. I've docked mine up here. So we need a Turbulence FD container, and this is the area in which our fluid simulation will take place. And as by default, it comes into the origin, and the grid size, if we look in our settings, is 100 by 100 by 100 centimeters, so a, a meter cubed. So if you think about cigarette smoke in, in the real world, a meter by a meter on the X and on the Z axis is, is probably right, but obviously we, we need it to float up and have more room for it to develop up here. So we need to increase the Y. So let's just try a value of say 250 on here. Yep, that looks pretty good. And then we want to move the container up um, so the origin is near the bottom of the container, so it has plenty of, of room. So we'll use the grid offset value for this, and we'll put just under half of this number, so let's try 110. There we go, great, that looks good. So now um, we've got the, this area ready to simulate. Now. The other number to look at here in these settings is the voxel size, and at the moment that's one centimetre. And the voxel is basically the resolution of the simulation. The lower the voxel size, the better the quality of the sim, but the longer it will take to simulate. And we can view what one centimetre voxel size in this grid looks like if we go to Viewport Preview and tick Show Grid. This is the voxel grid. So if I tick that, then we get this grid and the grid appears on the back of any face that you look at. If I zoom in, we can see these are the individual voxels, which are one centimetre squared. So this is actually, for, for what we want, this is quite a high resolution simulation area, and it'll take quite a long time to simulate, and we don't need that. If we were rendering with Turbulence FD and doing fire and smoke with the plugin, we'd want a really high resolution like this. But we're just using this fluid sim to push our X particles around. So we don't need it to be that good. So let's reduce it. Let's just go um, to two centimeters. So the voxels will be twice as big. There we go. And you can see they're much bigger. Now I think you have to play around with this and with experience you get the idea of what you need for, for your project. But for us, I think it'll sim relatively quickly this and but it'll also give us a bit of detail and, and enough wisps for our smoke. Good, so I'll just turn off that grid now that we've measured it. Good, so now what we need to do is we need to put an object into this container which is going to emit our fluid. So I'm going to pick a platonic and that's massive, it's uh, taken up most of the grid. So let's reduce the radius of this platonic down to about, let's say, five. Yep, that looks pretty good. Okay, so now we need to tell Turbulence FD that this platonic is going to emit some kind of fuel. So what we, the way we do that is we put a tag on it. So we have the platonic highlighted here, and we go to Tags, Turbulence FD Tags, Emitter. And here is our emitter tag, and here are the attributes. Now, there's an awful lot of settings in here, but thankfully, we don't actually need that many. First of all, we're going to go to channels and we're going to tell it what to emit. Now, because we're not rendering with Turbulence FD, Fire and Smoke, we don't need the control that burn, fuel and density would give us. We don't need these separate channels. So I'm going to leave them emitting nothing, zero. But what we are going to emit is some temperature. So the temperature is going to be, I'm just going to put one. Okay. And that is all we need in there for the time being. Good. 
So now what we need to do is go back to our Turbulence FD container and we need to go to the container settings and we need to have a look at this next box down which is the cache. So when we make this fluid simulation it is going to save every single frame a new file into a, a, a file sequence and it will save um, the position and the movement of all of the fluid that it, it develops. Um, so we need to tell it where to save this cache file to. So that's what we do in this box. So simulation caches, let's browse where we want to save it. So I'm going to go to my cache drive and I've got a tutorials folder. Uh, and in this tutorials folder, I'm going to make a new folder and I'm going to call it TFD cache. OK, select that one. OK, so I'm going to save my caches to that one and I need to make a new cache, a new recording. So we'll press OK and that's where it's going to be saved. Good. So then I'm going to come down here. Now these caches can get huge. Some of the projects that I make when you're making explosions and the like, the cache file can be, I've had ones that are over a terabyte. So they can be huge. Um, so it's a good, always a good idea to select compress cache, which will, your simulation will take slightly longer, but your overall cache file will be smaller because it compresses it as it's recording. And then we need to make sure the final thing before we can start simming is that we are caching the values that we have set. So if we just go back to our emitter tag and our channels, all we have set it to emit is temperature. So if I go back to my container, cache temperature is ticked. I don't need to cache density fuel or burn because we're not emitting it. But what I do need to cache is velocity. And this is what X particles is going to read and is going to make the particles move around with the fluid. So you have to cache velocity or it won't work at all with X particles. So that's a really, really important thing to remember. Good. All right. So now we're ready to simulate. So I'm going to open my simulation window and we get this little box here. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a interactive simulation. Now this is brilliant for designing how you want your fluid to move around, but I'd only suggest doing interactive if you've got a very powerful NVIDIA graphics card. Um, if you haven't got a powerful NVIDIA graphics card, go straight to the cache method uh, because you need a, a good graphics card to be able to drive this. So I'll just demonstrate it. If you haven't, don't worry, just miss out this bit and go straight to the cached simulation. So pick interactive. And now what I'm able to do is press start. And we're emitting and we can, we can see the um, simulation. And if I grab my platonic and move it around, we can move it in real time. Great, look at that. Fantastic. And we're able to do that because we're an interactive sim. Cool. Let's pop that back to where it was. So this is working nicely, but I think it's rising up a little bit too quickly. And whenever you do CG smoke, if you do it at real time, often it feels a bit quick, even though it's accurate. So what I'm going to do is go to my Turbulence FD container settings. I'm going to go to the simulation tab and the timing I'm going to reduce from real time, 100%, down to let's try 60. And as soon as I press this, you'll see the simulation change. So now it's moving more slowly. And as a result, we're getting a little bit more wispiness at the top. So that looks nice. The next thing we need to do is we need to get a little bit more wispiness at the bottom as soon as this fluid's being emitted because this is just going straight up until about this point here. So the way we do that is, let's just stop that simulation for now. What we're going to do is go back to our emitter tab and we're going to go to the texture box. And what we're going to do is we're going to um, basically wrap a texture around that platonic and the texture is going to be a noise. And wherever the noise is white, it will emit the temperature. And where it is black, it won't emit the temperature. So let's choose a different noise. Let's do a blister turbulence or electric. I like electric. So will increase the global scale to about 500. I'm going to crush the blacks a bit. 
and then give it a load of contrast. And I'm going to animate it so we can put the animation speed to 1. So then if I right click on this preview and press animate, we can see how it's going to animate. So all of this swirliness is going to happen over the face of our platonic. It won't render or anything, but it'll be there. And it just means that where the temperature is emitting from is going to be animating across, which is going to cause some turbulence and some movement in our simulation. So let's just switch that off. So let's see the result of that. Let's go start our interactive sim again. Now you see this movement. Let's zoom in. You see the emission is moving across the surface of that platonic now, following this noise pattern. And the result is more movement in our sim. Loads more movement. So that's looking really nice. We're getting some really good wisps here. So I'm pleased with that. So the last thing we're able to do, we're, you've used this texture to get a nice bit of minute turbulence and some movement. Now what we can do is add a big turbulence field to the whole container just to add to the movement a bit more. And the way we're going to do that is we're going to go to the turbulence box, the FD container box, and we'll go to our simulation tab and we're going to go to turbulence. And I'm going to add far too much turbulence to start with. I think you're always better off putting huge values in first to get an idea of what the shape of the turbulence is doing. And then you can dial it back to the look you want. So we're going to start with 50, which is going to be way too much. Now, the smallest size and the largest size dictates what the swirls are like. And basically, what you want to have is quite a small, smallest size, usually the same size as your voxel size. I'll just jump to container. So our voxel size is two centimeters. So I'm going to have the smallest size of the noise two, the largest size, let's try 50. And let's see what happens. So the turbulence is really pushing it around a lot, up and down and left and right and all over the place. So it's, it's too strong. So let's reduce that down to, let's say 15. So that's really being pushed around now, isn't it? By that turbulence, which is looking good. But for our sim, I think that's maybe a little bit too movement, uh, too much movement. So I'm going to reduce that large size so the swirls aren't as big, down to maybe 30. And let's put the power down to 5. Let's see what that gives us. Yeah, that's nice. So we've got added movement lots of wisps it's moving around as if there's a it's going through an actual atmosphere that's looking good great so now i can stop my interactive sim and now what i want to do is i, I want to actually cache this simulation so we're going to swap from interactive sim to cache and i'm just going to press start now i've only got 90 frames in my timeline and that isn't enough time for this to develop. So I'm going to give myself 500 frames. Actually, I'm not sure what frames per second I've put for this. Let's have a look. I'm on 30 frames per second. Um, I'm in the UK, so I always use 25, unless the job I'm doing dictates otherwise. So back to 500. And in my render settings, I'll change that to 25 as well. Always do it at the same time, just so you don't make any mistakes later in your piece. OK, so I'll continue the cache. And it's moving up there, caching quite quickly. I mean, look at this, it's flying through it. And if you think that it's writing a file for every frame to my cache disk, that's working through really quickly. And that's the beauty of using um, a graphics card that's powerful. Almost done. Great. So now I have that cache. I'll close that window. Don't need to see my platonic anymore. And we'll leave turbulence on. Actually, let's, let's minimize, uh, disable the visibility of turbulence. All right, good. So now what we need to do, all we're using turbulence for is to drive our particles. And we're going to use X particles. Uh, you can use thinking particles, um, but that will be a different tutorial because we need to get into a bit of espresso and stuff for that. So we're just going to use X particles, which if you can afford it, buy X particles because it is just 
brilliant and it is intuitive and user friendly and really really powerful so if you can afford it buy it you won't regret it so we click on X particles up here and we want an X particle system which brings in this file structure it looks complicated at first but all it is is some dummy folders to hold the different X particles elements to keep things tidy so we'll click on the emitter one and we need to make an emitter so we can create the particles in the first place so let's just click on create emitter and let's call that an emitter just to be organized we'll call it um, particles good and then we'll go so as, as, as standard in the emitter you get um, one of these square emitters that emits particles in the Z axis direction so what I want is a circle and I want it to be emitting on the Y axis and I'm just going to change the display to dots and start that again so we've got these particles going up now the particles at the moment is too big we want this circle to be smaller in diameter than the emitter this platonic so let's just make that visible again that platonic and we want to adjust the radius of this and so it's smaller than our emitter so I'm going to put it down to three centimeters good and we can get rid of that platonic there we go now also I want to go to emission and if I press play they're all shooting upwards but we don't want the particles to have any initial movement any speed any velocity because we want the fluid to push them so I'm going to put zero and let's just emit 10,000 particles per second if I press play nothing happens the particles are emitted but because they have no speed they just stay exactly where they are there are the particles so what we need to do is tell X particles you need to be pushed around by our turbulence FD cache and the way we do that is dead simple select the turbulence FD container go to the simulation tab and here you will see a velocity tab and inside here particle velocity scale is what we want and at the moment it's set to zero which means that the particles aren't using any of the velocity information at all and therefore they're staying still so if we put this up to 100 percent they should follow the simulation perfectly so let's just have a look there we go and that's looking pretty nice beautifully following that simulation and we can zoom look at look at all this I mean X particles is so cool great and if I make the turbulence FD sim visible you can see that it perfectly follows that cache so let's just I'll, I'll just change the color of the particles so we can see that a bit better if I make these let's make them that color and now you can see look being pushed by the velocity of that fuel and they're following it perfectly which is great okay good so let's um, make our turbulence FD container invisible because we don't need to see that all right so we're getting there and I'll put these particles to white now because that's the color we're gonna render them at to make our smoke so if you wanted it just to be one very short puff of smoke then we go to particles emission and instead of emitting all frames let's just emit from zero to let's just try 75 and see what happens so there's a blast of particles and then they stop and then they develop but what we need to do is for them to gradually fade out because at the moment they're um, they're just living forever so the way we do that is we just uncheck full lifespan and we give them a lifespan of I would say let's just put 350 frames at first 
but we want a high variation, maybe of 50 frames. So that means that these particles will live for anywhere between 300 and 400 frames um, randomly. So let's have a look what happens. There we go. So it's going to be a bit long because we're only on 174 frames now. So what I'm going to put is, I'm going to put 150 with 50 frames either way. Let's see what we get. All right, so it's developing. And now we should start seeing them disappear, but they're disappearing randomly. And then it disperses. Really good. So let's just uh, try a render now. So what I'd say is you should always cache your X particles because um, you will work much more quickly and it can cache these X particles almost as quickly as it can preview play them. But it means that you can rewind and scrub and it doesn't have to redraw the particles every time. So caching X particles is quite similar to caching Turbulence FD actually. What we need to do is go to other objects and we need to select in this pull down menu a cache object and then we get all these settings. So what we're going to do is we're going to cache external files and we're going to save them in a folder just like the turbulence one. So let's browse and look for that folder. So we don't want that one. We want computer, cache drive, tutorials and I'm going to make a new folder inside that and call it X particles cache okay that'll do and we'll stick it in that so that's where we're going to save our cache uh, we could compress this cache on build as well and let's um, I'll tell you what for the cache I'm, I'm just going to up the amount of particles that we have um, by so it's 10,000 let's just try 50,000 per second and that's going to give us about 150,000 particles approximately I'd say okay cool so back to our cache object and we want to build cache so that's go and it's scrubbing through what it's doing it's saving a cache on every frame into that folder and it's recording color position velocity and all kinds of different settings so as you can see it's slightly slower than just playing it through but once it's done it means that we can scrub through it really quickly and have lots more control so we'll leave that ticking away so the X particles cache uses your computer processor, not the graphics card. And so the more cores you've got, um, the quicker this process will be. Um, so as I say, the, the more particles that are released, um, the slower it kind of becomes. But I would imagine we've got about 300,000 particles being moved here. So if you think 300,000 particles, it's caching pretty quickly, really. Um, X particles is awesome. It really is. Okay, so we're getting close. A minute and 35 remaining, but that's to get right to the end of our timeline. And remember, our particles are going to have disappeared by 300 frames or even before. So we're almost done now. And now we've got fewer particles. It's speeding up. And now it'll just whiz through. So what I can do now, I can actually just press cancel. And because it's cached those initial frames, they're there in the in the memory in that folder. So now if you see the cache object has gone red and the little cache tag next to the particles has gone red. And this means that we're now reading the cache. And look, I can scrub backwards and forwards. And then we've got our cache. Great. And we can play it and it'll play really nicely and smoothly. Looking good. Right, so in this part of the tutorial, what we're going to do is we're going to render with X particles. Um, so how we're going to render in X particles is really, really simple. It's almost embarrassing how easy it is. We're going to go to create and we're going to make a new shader. Now, this is slightly off your screen, but I'm going to come down the shader menu and at the bottom there is X particles material. Click on that and here's the X particles material. And we drag and drop that onto our emitter. So let's double click that to bring up the values. So what we want to do is we don't want we, we could use the particle color because we've selected the particle color to be white. So let's um, leave that on particle color. And then on the size, what I want to do is 
I want to make the size, we want it to be way small. If we just render that now, it's way too big. So I'll just zoom in and we'll see. So here's all the particles. And if I render this, the particles are all rendering as huge blobs with a one centimeter radius. So they're, they're far too big. We want these to be microscopic. So to make them microscopic, we'll go to size and we'll bring the um, value down to, let's, well, let's try 1% scale. Looking better. So now we're starting to get some wispiness. But again, too big. So we're going to go down to, let's try 0.1. That's looking nice. All right. So, and that's rendering in under a second, which is pretty brilliant. So I'll tell you what, let's just do a quick preview render um, to see how that looks. So I'm not going to save and we'll do manual 0 to 300. Okay, and render to picture viewer. So these are rendering really quickly. Flying through there and we're getting nice bits of movement. And you see we can get little bits of speckly dots and that would I would describe that as having too low a resolution and that means that ideally you would simulate more particles and then put a, a smaller size in your material and the more particles you have and the smaller size you put in the material um, the better resolution this final render will be and you'll lose this speckliness and it'll look much more like smoke but for now this is fine and then it's starting to fade out and it's gone so that's looking really nice so let's just play that okay here's the real speed so that's looking really good and there you go so that is part one of the tutorial um, of how to use Turbulence FD to drive X particles to make wispy smoke. Here is the render. Now, part two of the tutorial is going to introduce Krakatoa into the mix. And what Krakatoa will do is it will render these particles from X particles, but we're going to use it to create millions and millions of particles on top of this simulation, which will make it ultra smooth and it'll make that smoke really milky and much higher resolution so that will be in tutorial part two see you then